Before we dive in, I want to let you know that I'm teaching a new online workshop for expecting parents on February 22nd. The workshop is called Important Things to Know Before You Bring Your Baby Home, and it will take place at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. I'd love to have you join me live. I'm going to do a Q&A at the end, but even if you aren't able to join live, you can sign up now and receive a login for the replay. This could also make a great gift for an expecting friend or relative. I'll link to the website to sign up in the show notes. Now, I don't have an older sister, but I've had the same best friend since I was two years old, and I am so grateful that she had her first baby before I welcomed my first baby. And since we are close like sisters, Laura always shoots it to me straight. She calls to warn me about those big parenting challenges that she's navigating with her oldest, knowing that I will be navigating similar challenges or situations just about 12 months behind her. And when I was pregnant, Laura had some very specific advice. Although I was a little shocked by some of it, and frankly, it added to my nerves, I was so incredibly grateful that she shared it. And in case you don't have an older sister or a best friend like Laura who had a baby before you and is going to shoot it to you straight, well, today you've got me. Today, my friend, I'm going to share the advice I'm so grateful that my friend shared with me before I brought home my first baby. Well, actually, before I even went to the hospital to welcome my first baby into this world. Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. The first memory I have of Laura giving me some strong advice about becoming a new mom was after she and some of my girlfriends hosted a lovely baby shower for me in Chicago. I opened the gifts and we all oohed and awed about all the adorable clothes I received. And then at the end, as she and I were packing up all the gifts in the car and everyone had left, she said something along the lines of, okay, Now, I want you to listen to me. You got so many cute footy pajamas, but I want you to return all of them. They all have the snaps, and you only want zippers. I think I must have shown some resistance to the idea of returning them all because they were so adorable, but she really didn't back down. She said, you're going to be changing so many diapers and you're going to be so tired and you're going to hate each and every one of those little snaps. So go get the zipper footy pajamas. Just trust me. I think I partially took her advice. At this point, I didn't quite realize that when she calls me to tell me something really important about parenting, it's legit really important. So I think I exchanged about half of those jammies, but after bringing my daughter home, I quickly realized that she was so right. And I ultimately went all in on zipper jammies. And by the time Ainsley came along, there was not a snap jammy to be found in this house. If you're expecting your first baby or you have another one on the way, and you have not experienced the power of the zipper jammies, I want you to know that they are the best. And there's basically no reason to have button up or snap pajamas. At some point, I can't remember if it was with Addison or Ainsley, Laura did send me a pair of magnet jammies. I think it was when I had Ainsley and I did end up loving those as well. So magnets would be another option. I'm going to link to some of my favorite jammies for you in the show notes. 
The other absolutely critical advice she gave me that truly scared the you know what out of me was related to preparing to come home from the hospital after giving birth. Maybe a month or so before my due date, Laura said that she had some really important advice to share with me for what I should be expecting post-birth. First, she said it was time to go to the drugstore and buy Colace so that I could start taking it quickly after giving birth. At that time, I had no idea what Colace was. She explained that it's stool softener and that if I ended up successfully having a vaginal birth like she did, I would also end up being terrified to poop and that Colace would save me. I don't think I need to elaborate on this very much here. You get the idea. But what I will say is she was so right. And I was so glad that I had taken this advice and that I had the colace to start taking quickly after I gave birth because I pretty much immediately knew that she was right and the thought of going to the bathroom was terrifying. Then in that same conversation, she said there were three important things to bring home from the hospital. She said that the hospital was going to likely give me a squirt bottle to use when going to the bathroom. These huge pads, the biggest pads I've ever seen that I can't even fathom, and this post-birth underwear. I don't think she even explained to me how bad this was going to be. And it was before people were showing it all over social media. But she said that I was going to receive some of these most likely and that what I needed to do was ask for a second squirt bottle so that I could have one in my upstairs bathroom and my downstairs bathroom and to ask for as many large pads and disposable underwear that the hospital was willing to to give me. So when they were preparing to discharge me, I did just that. I asked for and received a second squirt bottle. I got double the amount of pads and I don't know if it was double or definitely extra of the disposable underwear. And they were super nice about accommodating my request. And I have to tell you that I said hundreds of silent little thank yous to Laura each time I used the restroom during those first couple of days, probably even weeks. It's a little bit of a blur, but after coming home and realizing I didn't need to feel stingy about using these things and that extra squirt bottle made it so I didn't have to worry about running upstairs to use the bathroom or ending up in a bathroom without the squirt bottle when I absolutely wanted and needed to use it for that period in my life. It was such an overwhelming time where I felt out of my element and in so many ways, despite all the preparation I did, I often felt unprepared. And in this one small area, thanks to Laura's advice, I felt prepared. And I was so grateful to her for preparing me for this one small sliver that takes place immediately after you give birth. So if you're expecting and no one has yet shared these tips with you, these kind of make you squeamish tips. I hope you found this episode helpful. And if someone shared great advice with you when you were expecting, I would love to hear about it. Head on over to Instagram and leave a comment on my post about this episode. Let me know what advice they shared. And I will just reiterate, ladies, we don't need to hold back. If you have a good friend and you have some, I wish I had known, or thank goodness someone shared that advice with me, share away. As always, thanks for listening. And if you don't already follow the podcast, please take a moment to hit follow so that you won't miss anything.
Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.